Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 51 1 vs 1, Dangerous Hand-to-Hand -hand Battle Feeling the sudden rush of air approaching his back at breakneck speeds, Baizemin did not even hesitate for a moment as his body reacted before his brain did. Doing a 180-degree turn and raising his sword high, Baizemin's 85 strength points completely burst out as he slashed downward ferociously as if he wanted to split his enemy into two pieces. Clang. The sound of metal clashing against metal resounded loudly and Baizemin felt his right arm go very slightly numb. However, his strength stat was not low at this point so he was not forced to retreat. You finally came out, you damn zombie. A smile rose on Baizemin's face as he looked at his expected enemy. Indeed, Ming Shui Shui's description was lacking but accurate. The beast was undoubtedly a zombie. However, unlike normal zombies or any other zombie Baizemin had encountered so far, this zombie had completely deep blue skin. The zombie's eyes were wide open and unlike the rest of the zombies, the greenish glow in its eyes showed that its sight was there, unlike normal zombies that could not see anything. But the most striking thing was that its body seemed to be extremely agile and instead of two arms it had two strange, sharp-looking sword-like blades as limbs. Scram. Baizemin shouted as he pressed the full weight of his body forward while applying all his strength on the sword that had collided with one of the zombie's blades. Surprisingly, the zombie was forced back several steps. This showed that its strength was undoubtedly inferior to Baizemin's. Grr. A strange grunt came out of the zombie's mouth and suddenly its body leaned forward, disappearing from the place where it was standing a moment ago. Fast. This zombie was incredibly fast. Baizemin's pupils dilated even more and while gritting his teeth he immediately slashed towards its right side with all his might. Clang. Bang. After a powerful metallic clang, the zombie that was fast but obviously did not possess particularly high strength was sent flying and slammed hard into the opposing wall. However, Baizemin couldn't help but be a little scared. If it wasn't for his earlier experiment making use of his blood manipulation skill to somewhat control and increase the adrenaline outflow, then his normal reflexes would not have been enough for him to be able to react in time to the earlier attack. This meant that he would have been dead by now dead after just one trade. That's how terrifying the creatures that had officially taken a step on the path of evolution were. Even more so this zombie that only needed one cut to turn Baizemin into one of its comrades. Baizemin seized the opportunity when the evolved zombie was sent flying and activated his skill blood manipulation. The blood he had spread in this corridor suddenly turned into ten blood chains and under his control they flew towards the evolved zombie. The evolved zombie's greenish eyes glowed coldly and it jumped up before it began to move in strange patterns. Due to its speed, the creature managed to evade six blood chains, but four of them managed to surround it to the point where no matter where it tried to escape it would be impossible. However, what happened next was something Baizemin did not expect. Swoosh. A strange magical energy surged out from the evolved zombie's body and a semi-transparent colored barrier whose shape was similar to that of an egg surrounded the infected's body. The four blood chains slammed against the energy barrier, creating metallic sounds before falling to the ground. What? Baizemin's eyes widened in shock. However, the evolved zombie suddenly disappeared from its position without giving him time to think too much about what had just happened. Damn it. Baizemin quickly turned around and raised his sword in a defensive stance to defend against the unexpected attack. Clang. This time, because he had been taken by surprise, Baizemin was forced back approximately five meters as his feet dragged on the carpet that adorned the floor. Swoosh. The evolved zombie advanced and slashed twice using both blade-like arms. Clang. Clang. Baizemin was forced into defensive mode as he tried to process what had just happened. Wasn't the acquired skill of this evolved zombie the two blades on its body? Baizemin was dumbfounded and again realized the reason why Lilith had told him before that he had been one of the few beings in the history of the universe capable of successfully defeating and slaying an enemy of a higher order. Such creatures were simply too horrifying. If the evolved creatures of the first order were already this powerful, then how strong were the ones of the second order? Even worse. How strong was Lilith? And all those Sixth Order existences like her? Only now did Baizemin understand the reason why people like Lilith differentiated people like him and her into different categories, lower existences and higher existences. The difference between the two of them was simply colossal. 
since you have that strange skill, then I will cut off your head with my sword. Baizemin gritted his teeth and slashed forward with all his strength. The evolved zombie was sent flying and rolled across the ground several meters before leaping to its feet. However, before it could even take a step forward and burst out with its ghostly speed, Baizemin had already appeared before it and was attacking again, forcing the evolved zombie to raise both of its blade-like arms to parry the blow. Bang! Again, the evolved zombie was sent flying and this time its body hit the wall 20 meters away, making a powerful bang and cracking the wall in the process. Swoosh! Baizemin, who had started dashing immediately after sending the evolved zombie flying, appeared in front of the creature at lightning speed and slashed diagonally again with the intention of cutting off its head. I don't believe I can't kill you. His eyes flashed with infinite coldness as he looked at the beastly eyes of the zombie in front of him. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 52 Death Dance Bang! Baizemin had swung the Xinyuan sword with such power that the evolved zombie was forced to kneel on one knee while crossing both limbs in an X shape to parry the blow. Even the ground had cracked slightly due to the powerful impact, but that wasn't all that happened. Crack. A very small sound that would normally go unnoticed rang out in the middle of the silent corridor where two beings were struggling to survive and evolve into something superior. The evolved zombie's greenish eyes twitched softly and a strange growl escaped from its mouth as it looked at the tiny crack that had appeared on both blades. The Xinyuan sword was not a normal rare-grade treasure, it was a rare-grade treasure that was at the peak. With its ability to pierce through almost any defense below level 40 and even being able to pierce through an armored vehicle, even the two blades of the evolved zombie could not withstand being hit with such power by such a weapon. Damn zombie! By Zemin spat and taking advantage of the superior position turned his body and kicked the evolved zombie in the ribs, sending it flying over 20 meters. The evolved zombie rolled across the floor until it hit the wall of the opposite corridor. If it were any other level 21 living being facing this zombie, that person would undoubtedly die immediately or end up being infected. However, Baizemin had been constantly fighting against existences stronger than him and upon defeating them his stats received a certain power boost, so his actual strength was much more than that of any other level 21. In addition, the current Baizemin was under a strange effect in which his reflexes and reaction speed had increased at least two or three times more than normal due to the rapid circulation of adrenaline through his skill blood manipulation. If only one of these factors were not present, Baizemin would have already been defeated because although his strength stat was at least twice higher, his agility was inferior so he would not even have time to react before being killed. Clang. Bang. The metallic sound and explosions echoed throughout the corridors as the evolved zombie tried to use its superior agility to overwhelm Baizemin. However, the creature failed to overcome his reflexes and reaction speed so it was always sent flying after meeting his sword. Why isn't this zombie using that strange skill it used earlier to parry my attacks? Baizemin frowned tightly as he collided with the evolved zombie. The evolved zombie's blades had small cracks that slowly but surely began to spread wider and wider with each collision. However, the beast was not using that strange barrier that had stopped the blood chains. Could it be that it could no longer use it? Such an idea flashed in his mind and he immediately activated his blood manipulation skill again without worrying about lack of blood as his previous preparations by spreading blood over most of the corridors had made everything simpler for him. Swoosh. After spending more than 30 mana points, six huge blood spears floated in the air and shot at full speed towards the evolved zombie that was struggling to stand up after being sent flying. However, that strange barrier appeared again, causing Baizemin to frown. Before discovering the weakness of that skill, he was unwilling to waste any more mana. In the end, Baizemin once again entangled with the evolved zombie in a fierce dance to the death where a single mistake could cost anyone their death, slowly forcing the creature to retreat to one of the marked rooms where the final phase of the plan would come into play. In one of the rooms on the fourth floor. Clang. 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 Bang. 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 The sound of metal clanging against metal followed by bangs could be heard inside the room. Four friends were sitting in the corner of the room, moving as far away from the door as possible while looking with fearful eyes in that direction. It's been almost five minutes, but the sound of fighting still persists. Li Na whispered quietly like the buzzing of a mosquito. 
the group of friends had been waiting in hope for the arrival of a person with enough strength to save them from this hell they were locked in. However, while the person who had entered the building had gotten farther than the man who had snuck in several days ago, it seemed that this new person had also encountered an obstacle powerful enough to hold him back for so long. It seems we can only pray. Gao Min replied in a whisper as she joined both hands together and began muttering prayers. The moment all hope disappeared and one could only hope for a supernatural miracle, even the least believing person would start praying to some kind of almighty God in search of salvation. If this person is also forced to leave? I don't think I can endure another day. Fan Wu could not stop her tears from sliding down her beautiful face. She had already reached the breaking point and was probably the worst of the four friends. Wu Yijuan frowned tightly and a hint of worry glittered in her eyes. She had been the only one of the four girls who had glimpsed for a second the person who had charged into the building. Even such a fast person was forced to stop? Wu Yijuan thought inwardly, horrified. If even a person capable of crossing several tens of meters in a few blinks of an eye had been forced to fight for so long without being able to defeat the other side, then this could only mean that the enemy was incredibly powerful. Only now did Wu Yijuan realize how lucky they had been to continue alive so far and, for the first time in six days, she was silently grateful to be locked up in this place she had previously called hell. Bang! As the group of four friends prayed for the safety and victory of whoever was fighting whatever was out there, the door of the room was suddenly sent flying alongside a body the height of a human being. Ah! The door collapsed. Monster! It's a zombie! Oh my god, it's over! The girl screamed in terror and drew energy from where they didn't know they had it to stand up and run to the other corner as they looked at the blue-skinned zombie getting to its feet with staggering steps. Grr. The evolved zombie opened its mouth and looked at them with eyes filled with murderous intent before taking a step forward. Seeing the greenish eyes of the zombie staring at them with a bloodshot gaze, the faces of the four girls paled with fear. Swoosh. A shadow flashed before the eyes of the four girls before a powerful metallic bang made their ears buzz. When the shadow was forced to stop by the two strange blade-like arms of the strange blue-skinned creature, they finally caught a glimpse of the possible savior of their lives. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 53 Two Sides of a Coin Bang! The floor cracked and the window panes were crushed by the shockwave caused by the collision between the Xin Yuan sword and the two sharp blades of the evolved zombie. Finally seeing the man who had dared to enter the female dormitory and who had killed who knew how many dangerous creatures to reach this place, the group of four friends was a bit surprised by the fact that he was actually a person two or three years younger than themselves. However, the biggest surprise was when they saw that this young man actually had the strength to fight on equal footing against a monster so strange and horrifying as that zombie with blue skin and greenish eyes. No. In fact, from the expression on his face he seemed to have the upper hand. Remembering that terrifying speed at which he crossed the gate and that horrifying strength that was powerful enough to slightly crack the ground without even touching it, Wu Yijuan and her friends could not help but be amazed. Of course, what the four girls felt the most was hope, hope to survive, hope to finally be released from this prison that was heaven but at the same time was hell for them. But in fact, Bai Zemin had the upper hand in this battle almost to the point of overwhelming his enemy. Isn't this thing a bit weak? While clashing swords against the evolved zombie, Baizemin couldn't help but whisper such words under his breath. He hadn't paid attention to the four friends in a corner as although he currently had the advantage one slip up would be the end for him. It's not that that creature is weak, in fact, that zombie is very strong, Lilith replied lazily. The problem here is you. After defeating the First Order Blazing Beetle you got a great boost of power. Besides, among the evolved existences there are also differences in power and type as well as a combat style. Baizemin nodded before kicking the evolved zombie and making it almost fall out of the window. He had finally reached his target, now he just had to wait a moment there. Of course, such a thing was not easy since the evolved zombie was constantly moving and with its agility was giving Baizemin a headache. Besides, by Zemin. Lilith's voice sounded again. Your current condition. You are likely to suffer the consequences for manipulating the way your own body works. W.H. Dash by Zemin was about to ask what she meant by those words when suddenly his expression changed and he growled slightly. A small trickle of blood slipped from the corner of his mouth, leaving him dumbfounded. What is this all about? 
the evolved zombie hadn't even been able to hit him once, how was he suddenly bleeding? Furthermore, his veins suddenly began to feel extremely hot as if instead of blood, burning lava was running inside it. I told you. Lilith frowned and a hint of worry flashed in her eyes. You're currently close to creating an active skill thanks to your natural knowledge of human physiology and your blood manipulation skill, but apparently you're still missing something, comma. You should stop manipulating the adrenaline rushing through your veins by controlling your blood or the pain will only get worse and you could get seriously hurt. While adrenaline was mostly beneficial, this was so when it was flowing at normal speeds and the body could respond to such stimulation. By Zeman's body had been enhanced many times over after absorbing so much soul power, therefore, the normal speed at which his adrenaline naturally moved was also many times faster than a normal person. However, by manipulating his own blood, Baizemin had forced that speed to double. Baizemin did not respond but his eyes glittered and a hint of resolve appeared in them. If he stopped controlling his adrenaline now that he could through blood flow, then that adrenaline would soon disappear since the initial fright he felt had disappeared after beating up the evolved zombie. If the substance that enhanced his reflexes and reaction speed disappeared, Baizemin had no confidence in being able to stop the evolved zombie's attacks. The speed of the evolved zombie was simply too high for the current by Zemin, and if he could not defend himself from its attacks then his superior strength was useless. Besides he had another motive. By Zemin secretly sighed inwardly as he looked sideways at Lilith. Everything had consequences, and he was willing to suffer some of them to achieve his goals. Sometimes, life was like that, losses and gains being two sides of the same coin. Meanwhile, in a building a few dozen meters away from the female dormitory. Chen, he and Shangguan Bing Shui were standing near a large broken window on the top floor of the building. Chen he was holding his bow with his left hand and had put on a pair of rubber gloves on his right hand to hold the icy stake that Shangguan Bing Shui had crafted, even though she was controlling the temperature it was possible to see that his hand was shivering slightly due to the coldness. The carbon fiber cable attached to the ice stake was falling out of the window, and a few meters away on the ground Liangpeng could be seen holding the other end of the cable with both hands. The three of them were staring at the fourth floor windows of the female dormitory, as although Bai Zemin had said he would lure the zombie to one of those windows it was impossible to tell which one it would be. Over there. Shangguan Bing Shui suddenly noticed something strange and raised her pristine hand to indicate the location to Chen He. Got it. Chen He nodded and quickly put the ice stake on his bow as he took a professional shooting stance that he had grown accustomed to and had perfected over the years. Shangguan Bing Shui glanced at him for a moment before stepping forward and leaping out the window to prepare to fight. While she could attack from afar, the more distant her target was the longer she would need to control her ice creations in the air, and due to the fact that she had no telekinesis, she needed to expend astronomical amounts of mana. Therefore, she had no choice but to get as close as possible. Chen He's gaze wandered from the target for a moment and looked at Shangguan Bing Shui, who seemed to be floating in the air and hovering like an immortal ice fairy. In the end, he shook his head and quickly focused. Don't move, he muttered as he narrowed his eyes. In his line of sight several meters away Chen, he could make out the back of the strange blue-skinned zombie just as Ming Shui Shui had described. He could also see by Zemin's body flashing constantly, entangled in what appeared to be a tenacious fight where swords were constantly clashing. I got you. Chen, he whispered again for no one in particular and his eyes flashed coldly before releasing his grip on the bowstring. The ice stake had turned into an arrow that traveled at astonishingly high speeds and in a matter of a second or two it had already hit its target. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 54 Realization Swoosh, the piercing sound of the howling wind reached by Zemin's ears from the first moment the ice stake had left the bowstring's bell. Immediately and without delay he pressed the blades of the evolved zombie down with all his might, instead of sending it flying like the previous times, this time his aim was to do his best to keep it firmly in place without allowing it to move. The ice stake that had been used as an arrow hit the back of the evolved zombie hard and easily went all the way through its body until the tip protruded into the chest area. Roar. A strange roar similar to that of a wounded lion erupted from the evolved zombie's mouth as its green eyes widened and it began to struggle frantically in an attempt to free itself from the strange object that had pierced its body. 
Unfortunately for the beast, the ice stake created by Shang Guan Bing Shui had been shaped in such a way as to make it easy to pierce through flesh, but extremely difficult to get out due to the small sharp spikes protruding in the opposite direction. Realizing that it might be in real danger of death, the evolved zombie began to struggle, frantically trying to flee. The smell of rotting flesh and dried blood assaulted by Zimin's nostrils, obviously, the evolved zombie had been delighting in other creatures and other humans slowly over the past few days. However, although the smell was foul, he gritted his teeth and stopped breathing to firmly hold the zombie in the window area without letting it escape. Shang Guan Bing Shui's ice skill is extremely powerful and amazing, but Chen He's marksmanship is really great considering he was only using a normal bow to shoot this ice stake. Bai Zemin silently thought. Liang Peng, pull the cable. With all your strength. Bai Zemin shouted out loud. The girls in the dormitory were shocked, but they soon realized that this young man was not alone as from the floor a deep voice echoed everywhere. I'm on it. Immediately afterwards, along with a war roar coming from outside the building, the evolved zombie suddenly howled in pain. The ice stake firmly stuck into its flesh stabbed with far stronger thrust and tore the inside of the creature's body as the carbon fiber cable was fiercely pulled taut. Due to the great strength used by Liang Peng, the evolved zombie flew out of the fourth floor window and began to plummet towards the ground. You girls stay away from the door and wait here. Without looking back, Bai Zemin said those words and jumped out of the window while using one foot to propel himself forward. The group of four friends looked at each other and quickly began to move the beds toward the door to act as obstacles that could buy time in dangerous moments, drawing strength from where they didn't know they had it after so many days without good food. Outside the building, Jiawa. Liang Peng screamed at the top of his lungs as the muscles in his body expanded to twice their normal size. Go to hell. Seeing the blue-skinned zombie falling towards him, Liang Peng raised his huge hammer and swung it behind his body before swinging it with all his strength forward. The surrounding air seemed to blast due to the amount of strength used and because the evolved zombie was squirming in pain in the middle of the air and unable to control its body it had no chance to dodge. Bang! The infected was hit hard and its body that was falling in a curved line was sent flying in a straight line as if it was a meteorite. Bang! The zombie's body hit the wall of the nearby building hard and a pile of rubble collapsed onto it. Phew. It wasn't so much in the end, was it? Liang Peng looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui who was several meters away and relaxed. The strength he had used along with the powerful blow of his hammer was enough to bring down an entire house. Liang Peng did not believe that a creature whose body was so thin as a stick could survive after being hit by such a blow. Retard. It didn't die yet. Bai Zemin shouted after falling to the ground and immediately broke into a sprint at full speed. Swoosh! Suddenly the dust cloud opened up completely and the rubble was cut into countless pieces at lightning speed. Before Liang Peng could react, the evolved zombie charged forward and raised its blade as it fiercely slashed downward. Liang Peng's face turned white like a cartoon ghost. Seeing those bloodshot eyes staring at him with murderous intent brimming over, Liang Peng's last thought was that his life was over. In fact, it should have been. Fortunately for him, Shang Guan Bing Shui did not believe that a creature similar in level to the giant elephant beetle would die so easily even if her reasoning told her that it was impossible to survive such a powerful attack. Ice Wall Shang Guan Bing Shui's hurried voice rang out and less than a second later a meter-thick wall of ice appeared before Liang Peng, separating him from the evolved zombie just before it managed to deal the killing blow. A tearing sound echoed through all the nearby buildings as the blade of the evolved zombie sliced through the thick wall of ice as if it was made of soft, thin cotton. Ice Bullets Shang Guan Bing Shui couldn't help but let her expression change when she saw how easily her defensive wall was knocked down and quickly gritted her teeth, spending a quarter of her current mana to create 20 small ice bullets and launch them forward. The ice bullets looked like real bullets as they moved at speeds difficult to track with the naked eye. However, to Shang Guan Bing Shui's disbelief, the evolved zombie's greenish eyes glowed and the bullets were deflected by the same strange energy barrier that had stopped by Zemin's blood chains and blood spears. The sound of the ice bullets hitting the strange barrier was similar to that of small metal spheres hitting a steel plate and a second later all the ice bullets had melted into the ground. Swoosh. Swoosh. Swoosh.
The wind howled and the evolved zombie quickly turned its body before starting to cut with its only intact blade as one of them had been destroyed by Bai Zemin's constant attacks and Liang Peng's powerful final blow with his hammer. In less than a second, the creature had managed to make three different cuts, showing that even if it was wounded its speed was still as scary and horrifying as ever. Clang. 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 After three metallic sounds, three arrows fell to the ground a close distance from the evolved zombie. The evolved zombie looked towards the distant building and its eyes glowed ominously as it glared at Chen He, who was stunned to see the power demonstrated by the zombie in front of him. In fact, it was not only Chen He. Shang Guan Bing Shui and Liang Peng were shocked and frightened after realizing the reason why Bai Zemin had previously refused to fight this creature. Was this the power of a first order creature? The blue skinned zombie's power was too strong. In just two seconds, it had shown enough power to prove to them that no one could really stop it. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 55 The Battle is Over and the Debt is Settled. Shang Guan Bing Shui, Liang Peng, and Chen He's confrontation against the blue skinned zombie had been brief, only two or three seconds in total. However, those two or three seconds were enough for each of them to realize how strong the enemy in front of them was. In fact, only Liang Peng had managed to successfully hit the strange zombie once, and the only reason he had managed to do so was because the zombie was in the air unable to defend itself and suffering great amounts of pain. It had only been a few seconds, but during that short and scarce time, the life of one of the strongest evolved fighters of the group was close to perishing. Too strong and too terrifying. That was the general thought of the three of them. Swoosh, the blue-skinned zombie saw by Zemin running towards it and quickly took off running. Clearly, the infected creature seemed to know that confronting him would put it in danger, so it tried to take the opportunity to run away. Does this damn creature already have a basic level of intelligence? Bai Zemin felt his scalp stand up at the thought of such a fast zombie lurking in the nights waiting for the opportunity to attack. Stop it. We can't let it slip away from us. Bai Zemin gritted his teeth and pushed his speed to the limit. Although he still had status points free and could add them to agility at any time, unless extremely necessary, he wasn't willing to waste them so casually. The evolved zombie that was trying to flee was running in the direction where Shang Guan Bing Shui was, so when it arrived in front of her and saw her blocking the way, the creature howled strangely and slashed downward with its blade. Chen He's face turned pale at the sight of the zombie's intentions and his legs felt weak as he realized that he not only had no time to react, but also could do nothing more than watch as the life of his loved one was at risk. Even Bai Zemin, who was the fastest of the group, did not have the ability to close such a large distance in such a short time as he would need at least a second or two more. But what everyone saw was not Shang Guan Bing Shui's beautiful body being cut into two halves. Clang. After a sound of metal clanging against metal, everyone saw the ice beauty raising a small curved dagger to the level of her head. The blade of the evolved zombie was large, but Shang Guan Bing Shui had actually used such a small bladed weapon to parry its attack. Moreover, from her grip on the dagger and the cold expression on her face, even a fool could tell that it wasn't luck and she was definitely a trained person skilled in close combat. Perfect. Shang Guan Bing Shui hold it there. Bai Zemin couldn't help but praise loudly. In the next instant, he reached for the zombie's back and quickly raised his sword high before performing an oblique slash. The evolved zombie tried to turn around to stop Bai Zemin's attack, but Shang Guan Bing Shui did not allow it to do what it wanted. She leaned her body forward and used all her strength to oblige the zombie to stand in place, thanks to the zombie's strength not being especially high, she was not forced to retreat and seemed to be able to stand her ground in a close battle. Slash, at the last instant and just before losing its head, the evolved zombie tilted its body at a strange angle, causing Bai Zemin's slash to miss. However, the creature was by no means unscathed. Yell, a high-pitched howl escaped uncontrollably from the evolved zombie's mouth. Its left arm had been completely hacked off along with a portion of its ribs. Blood had begun to gush out like an endless fountain and from the distorted expression, it was obvious that unlike normal zombies that did not fear pain or death this zombie could feel great amounts of pain. Shang Guan Bing Shui took the opportunity when the evolved zombie was writhing in pain and with her free hand, she used all her mana to make an eye sword. 
her face turned as white as a sheet and she felt her world spinning around her, even so, she bit her lips making them bleed and stabbed forward. The ice sword, created with all her mana, pierced the evolved zombie's body with ease. The creature's stomach split open before it began to freeze from the inside out, hindering its movements immensely. The beast roared ferociously trying to break free, but that was its last fight. Baizemin used the momentum of his previous attack to make a full turn and made a horizontal slash. This time, thanks to Shangguan Bing Shui's support, the evolved zombie had neither the ability nor the luck to avoid the attack. The zombie's head shot up into the sky before falling to the ground with a thud and rolling two or three times. Soon after, the body of the now headless evolved zombie fell to the side and dark-colored blood began to spurt out uncontrollably, staining the ground completely in just a few seconds. Four orbs of energy came out of the zombie's body and each orb entered each person's body. Chen He and Liang Peng's were similar, Shang Guan Bing Shui's was about two or three times brighter, and Bai Zemin's was several times brighter than theirs. Chen, he finally sighed in relief and his heart that seemed to be about to burst out of his mouth managed to settle down. Liang Peng was still frozen, apparently unable to react. This was also natural, considering that the entire battle had lasted less than five seconds and his life was a hair's breadth away from being over if not for the timely intervention of his party members. Shang Guan Bing Shui still seemed to be in combat mode as she was still clinging tightly to the dagger in her hands, this dagger was precisely the normal grade treasure that Bai Zemin had given her earlier. Her generous chest rose and fell as she looked forward with her eyes wide open and her sickly pale face made her look extremely pitiful. On the other hand, Bai Zemin finally managed to relax his tense muscles and secretly let out a sigh of relief. While it was true that throughout the fight he was superior, the reality was that his life had always been on the line since the slightest of mistakes for him meant ultimate death. Cough. After deactivating his blood manipulation skill and ceasing to manipulate his own bloodstream, Baizemin covered his mouth with one hand and spat out a mouthful of fresh blood into his palm. H.A. Shang Guan Bing Shui finally seemed to wake up and realize that victory was theirs. However, seeing the drops of blood escaping down the seam of his fingers, she couldn't help her eyes from widening a little. Baizemin gritted his teeth in an effort to endure the pain of his blood vessels shaking non-stop and looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui with calm eyes. He wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth with the back of his hand and with his dark eyes fixed into her blue eyes he calmly said, Now you and I are equal. I don't owe you anything anymore. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 56 Differences Between the Past and the Present Eh? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Shang Guan Bing Shui furrowed her eyebrows slightly and leaned forward a little closer. She wasn't pretending that she hadn't heard anything, the problem was that she really hadn't heard. Because Bai Zemin had spoken in a tone of voice that was too low due to the pain that he was feeling and because Shang Guan Bing Shui herself was experiencing mental exhaustion as a result of losing all her mana all at once, it so happened that there was a blip in what one wanted to express and what the other was going to hear. Bai Zemin looked at her for a moment before shaking his head and calmly saying, it's nothing, there was no need for him to say anything anyway. She probably already knew that too considering how smart she was. By the way. Are you okay? Shang Guan Bing Shui did not continue with the previous matter and instead looked at the blood dripping from his hand and pointed. No need to worry, it's no big deal. Bai Zemin waved his hand and dealt with it as if it was nothing. In fact, except for the pain that he felt coming from his blood vessels, as long as he was careful and didn't force his blood flow for a day or two he should be fine. I see. Shang Guan Bing Shui nodded and didn't ask any more questions either. Hey, both of you. Chen He walked up at that moment and looked at the two of them. Are you both okay? Bai Zemin looked at him and seeing how his eyes lingered on Shang Guan Bing Shui couldn't help but chuckle. This person is quite obvious. Although Chen He was asking the two of them, he was doing it out of politeness and the fact that they were all a team. But Bai Zemin could see that the handsome expert archer's real concern was the icy beauty dressed in white. Except for exhausting my mana, there is no problem with me at all. Shang Guan Bing Shui shook her head softly and couldn't help but look at the red blood on Bai Zemin's hand again with a frown. I am all right too. Bai Zemin gave the same reply and turned his attention away from them to look at Liang Peng, hey, big boy. Are you all right? 
Leong Peng, who was standing silently as if frozen, seemed to wake up at Bai Zemin's words. He looked at everyone before looking at Shang Guan Bing Shui with a complex look. In the end, the hammer man sighed and left without saying anything. Apparently, the previous battle had been a big surprise to him, even more so considering how close he had come to dying and how helpless he had been in front of the evolved zombie. The place remained silent as if each of the three were immersed in their own thoughts. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of awkwardness, Chen He looked at Bai Zemin, who was casually standing there as if deliberating something and asked, Bai Zemin, the giant beetle from before. Did you really defeat it single-handedly? Yeah. Although it was harder back then. That beetle was stronger and the me from back then was weaker. Bai Zemin replied lightly without paying too much attention to him. He leaned against the wall and began to read the messages with green letters in his retina that no one but him could see. Hearing his casual words, knowing that the giant elephant beetle was even more hideous than the decapitated zombie on the ground, and remembering Bai Zemin's deplorable condition three days ago, Chen He couldn't help but sigh as his eyes glittered with a hint of bitterness and jealousy. Chen He had always been praised since he was young as an outstanding talent. It didn't matter if it was grades, sports, attitude, personality, appearance, status. Chen He basically had it all. Before the soul record reached planet Earth, Chen He did not even know that there was a person named Bai Zemin in this world. But this was also natural, after all, the person named Bai Zemin was nothing special. A third-year student who barely got the necessary grades to enter this university, from a middle-class family, an employee of an automobile workshop that also functioned as a blacksmith shop, and whose appearance was just average. Bai Zemin also had no one close to him, while Chen He was always surrounded by all kinds of people like stars surrounding the moon. The difference between the two was abysmal, as great as the distance between heaven and earth. But what about now? After the soul record came to this world, Chen He realized that except for his appearance and his background that he still didn't know whether it continued in existence or not, Bai Zemin was overwhelmingly superior. This was something he already knew but unconsciously ignored or did not want to accept. However, after today's fight against Xiao Long and after the final battle against the evolved zombie, Chen He finally accepted the reality. This world really had changed and the past was just that, past. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at her childhood friend, who looked bitter and sad but at the same time, a touch relieved, unsure of what he was thinking. In the end, she just said the first thing that came to her mind, Chen He. That was a good shot. He looked at her for several seconds, appreciating every inch of her face as if to burn every detail into his memory. Finally, he smiled and nodded, it was. With nothing more to say, Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at Bai Zemin and frowned as she saw that he still seemed to ignore the surroundings completely. In fact, he seemed to have forgotten about the existence of the two of them as he currently seemed to be talking in a low voice to himself. Had this person gone crazy? Shang Guan Bing Shui couldn't help but let that thought flash through her mind before forcibly shaking it off. In the end, she looked at the orbs beside the zombie corpse before turning her gaze towards him again, Bai Zemin, are you really okay? Ah? Uh? Bai Zemin blinked and looked at the two people blankly. He naturally hadn't gone crazy. It was just that he was currently having a small talk with Lilith about what to do next and was so secretly excited that he ended up forgetting about Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen He's existence, in fact, he had even forgotten about something very important as well. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him for a moment and at his confused face, she couldn't help but shook her head. In the end, she pointed to the ground and said in an indifferent voice, what shall we do with these things? I mean the distribution. Bai Zemin looked at the spot pointed out by Shang Guan Bing Shui and seeing the glowing orbs lying on the ground almost felt like shouting out loud. A red orb equivalent to a normal grade treasure, a orange orb equivalent to a rare grade treasure, and a yellow orb equivalent to a magic grade treasure. Three orbs that contain treasures. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 57 Mutant Plant, Part 1 Because Liang Peng had left a bit dejected and apparently with a lot of things to think about, there were only three people left present, exactly the same amount of orbs that the evolved zombie had dropped this time. This had made things easier as it would otherwise be difficult to start distributing the loot. Although it was likely that Liang Peng would give up his share in order to feel less indebted, it was also not certain that such a thing would happen. 
after all, the human heart was unpredictable. Besides, Bai Zemin did not know whether Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen he knew about the existence of the orbs and how they were distributed according to their colors. Wouldn't it be good to take advantage of that as much as possible then? However, that was merely a fleeting thought as Bai Zemin knew that it was not easy to deceive the two people in front of him, Chen He and Shang Guan Bing Shui were two extremely smart people, especially her, who was not only smart but also cunning as a fox. Indeed, as he looked at her he saw that she was also staring at him. I like the color yellow. Bai Zemin said out of nowhere. Chen He and Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at each other strangely before she turned to look at him and said with a smile, I love yellow too. Bai Zemin was already immune to her cunning little fox smile. Instead, he gave her a friendly smile and continued, well, too bad. Considering that my contribution is the highest, I guess I'll be shameless and take the yellow orb. Want to play games of cunning with me? You're still too immature. Bai Zemin secretly sneered. Indeed, Shang Guan Bing Shui's smile disappeared in the blink of an eye and she looked at him with the same indifferent look as always while secretly clicking her tongue and muttering something that probably only she could understand. With nothing more to say, Bai Zemin stepped forward and picked up the yellow orb with delight. This was his second yellow orb and thus his second magic grade treasure, how could he not be secretly excited? After picking up the orb, Bai Zemin looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen He and slowly explained, Red orb contains a normal grade treasure and orange orb a rare grade treasure. Although I think it's quite obvious, but the normal treasure is inferior to the rare treasure. Still, both are good stuff, you two decide who gets what. Hearing Bai Zemin's explanation and after remaining silent for a moment, Chen He looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui and waved his hands as he said, Bing Shui, you take the rare treasure. I couldn't do much during the battle and except for shooting the ice state that you created my contribution is even inferior to Liangpeng. At least he managed to break one of that creature's blades. Shang Guan Bing Shui did not stand on ceremony and nodded without saying a word. At a certain point, she and Bai Zemin had the same main goal, to survive. In order to survive and not fall and then be devoured by some strange creature, she needed power and treasures were undoubtedly a good way to acquire such power. Even if it was external strength, the treasures could help them defeat more powerful enemies which would allow her to absorb a greater amount of pure soul power. Without saying a word, each of them kept their respective loot of victory to look at and study later. Let's start inspecting the female dormitory. Bai Zemin frowned and said with some confusion, I think there's something weird in there. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him strangely but said nothing and nodded indifferently before starting to walk towards the nearby building. The survivors were left in a nearby building under the protection of Fu Xiefeng, Kai Jingyi, and Zhong De. Although none of the three had treasure-level weapons, any iron pipe or wooden stick was enough to deal with the zombies, considering that they all possessed a skill and a stat at least two or three times higher than that of a normal person. A careful search was conducted in the female dormitory and the ones in charge were Bai Zemin, Chen He, Shang Guan Bing Shui, and Liang Peng who had already recovered a bit from his negative thoughts. The lower and second floors were devoid of any signs of life. Both floors had been cleared by the zombies or Chao Long in the past. On the third floor, approximately 30 female students were found who were still alive. However, the biggest surprise was that on the fourth floor there were over 100 female students alive. Although all of them were weak and some of them seemed to have become a bit mentally ill with all that was occurring, at least they were still alive and had a chance to lead as good a life as possible unlike those who had been eaten alive. In a room on the fourth floor, Bing Shui, Gao Min jumped into Shang Guan Bing Shui's arms and began to sob like a little girl releasing all her grievances with her parents after being bullied by someone bigger. Gao Min had been practically the pillar of her group since Li Na and Fan Wu needed constant mental support in order to overcome the mental pressure and hunger that threatened to drive them crazy, after all, it was not easy to go through such an abrupt change overnight. On the other hand, Wu Yijuan was generally quiet and silent so it was difficult to know what she was thinking or if she was well. Therefore, Gao Min could only take on the role of the pillar by herself unless she wanted to see her friends dying in front of her eyes. It's okay. Everything will be fine now. Shang Guan Bing Shui gently stroked the girls back in her arms and let out an inaudible sigh. It wasn't just Gao Min, Shang Guan Bing Shui was also assaulted by Li Na and Fan Wu so she had to take some time to calm her friends down. 
although they had only met three or four years ago, they had become very close to each other, and Shangguan being Shui was really happy that they were safe. Ijuan, it's good to see that you're okay. Chen, he looked at the stand-up beauty and sighed. If anything happened to you, your father and grandfather would go crazy later. All thanks to you guys who arrived on time. Wu Ijuan smiled slightly and nodded. Even though she was not in her best condition due to not being able to eat properly for almost a week, her clothes were clean and the smell of her body was sweet as roses thanks to the shower in the dormitory. Every day, the girls showered very carefully and without making too much noise every time they stepped into the hot tub to avoid attracting zombies. So, they were comfortable in that sense at least. At first, they were reluctant out of fear. But hunger, confinement, and the discomfort of not being able to take a hot shower were making everything more difficult for them. So, after two or three days of deliverance, the four decided that if they were going to die at least they might as well release one of their sorrows. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 58 Mutant Plant, Part 2 Chen He, Shang Guan Bing Shui, and Wu Ijuan were the three friends who had known each other since childhood due to their family ties. The three were about the same age, with Wu Ijuan being the youngest of the group by one year. The reason why Chen He had previously said that if anything happened to Wu Ijuan her father and grandfather would go crazy when they found out was because, in fact, her status was not at all normal, even surpassing Chen He's military family status by a large margin. She was actually the granddaughter of the current Prime Minister of China Wu Jianhong, being known as one of the eight most powerful men in the whole country. Her father, Wu Keqian, was the current mayor of the Chongping district of Beijing City, which consisted of a total of ten localities. Wu Yijuan's Wu family was not only one of the most terrifying and politically powerful families in all of China but in recent years had also begun to expand into the military field since one of Wu Yijuan's uncles had quickly risen through the ranks of the army. Basically, Wu Yijuan's status was that of a little princess in the past and it was precisely because of her powerful backing that no one had dared to lay a finger on her although there were countless outstanding young men drooling to court her and all those who had dared to try had disappeared without alerting anyone. If she, the most beloved granddaughter of the second most powerful man in all of China, suffered any backlash, if the army managed to overcome this tribulation and the central government remained standing, the whole country would probably be shaken by the wrath of the Wu family. Even launching nuclear warheads on the zombies was not impossible. Bai Zemin had stood outside the room for several minutes observing the group's friendly reunion from a corner. The tears of pain and relief as well as the muffled sobbing of the three girls surrounding Shang Guan Bing Shui. He looked at all of this with a complicated expression before shook his head softly and turned around to leave quietly. As he walked silently down the corridor, a silence where even his footsteps could not be heard, the beautiful woman walking beside him tilted her head and asked, curiously, could it be that you are jealous? Huh? Bai Zemin looked at her with raised eyebrows and asked in return, could it be that you've gone completely mad, beautiful queen? Don't be shy, just admit it Lilith said in a playful voice, before suddenly jumping on him as she said cheerfully, this beautiful big sister will spoil you a lot, come here. You. Let go of me you perverted succubus. If you want my life energy you'll have to fight a lot harder than this, he began to push trying to break free. I told you it's not like that. Fortunately, no one was present, or else they might see the amusing scene of a young man struggling against seeming nothingness as if he had gone completely insane. After calming down the Gao Min trio and allowing them to eat something light to open their stomachs, Shang Guan Bing Shui approached Wu Ijuan who was drinking boxed milk along with a bread bun, and gave her a rare genuine smile, I'm glad you're safe and healthy, Ijuan. Wu Ijuan reciprocated the genuine smile and looked at her with a relieved but somewhat complex look as she said, although I knew you would definitely be fine since it's you, I didn't expect you to become this strong. Earlier, after slightly ensuring the entrance to the room, Wu Ijuan could not help but approach the window so she had witnessed with her own eyes the short but dangerous battle of the group of four against the strange blue-skinned zombie. She had seen how Shangguan Bing Shui created and controlled ice as if she was a goddess so she couldn't help but feel a touch of envy of her. After all, while Shangguan Bing Shui had obtained the ability and power to defend herself, Wu Yijuan herself could only hide in this small room in order to survive. Shangguan Bing Shui seemed to know what her good friend's thoughts were. 
but she shook her head and sighed lightly as she explained in a somewhat sad voice, which was in stark contrast to her usually cold and immovable tone, no. Actually, I was just lucky. At that time, Xiaobai turned into a strange creature, but before it could move it seemed to be frozen. I take the opportunity and stabbed it with a knife. Xiaobai was actually the little white rabbit that Shangguan Bingxue's mother had given her, and she really loved it very much. Xiaobai was a rather old rabbit that had been with her for over five years, but the mana had affected it as its body was mutated and, seizing the moment as she noticed something was wrong, she killed it, thus gaining her ice maker skill. I see. Sorry about that. Wu Yijuan finally understood and looked at her with a tinge of sympathy. As her best friend and childhood acquaintance, Wu Yijuan knew how important Xiao Bai was to her and the significance of that rabbit in her heart. The fact that Shang Guan Bing Shui had the courage and resolved to end its life without hesitation was something that not many people would be able to do, by the way. Trying to change Shang Guan Bing Shui's somewhat subdued mood and wanting to ask this for quite some time now, Wu Yijuan looked at the surroundings and asked in confusion, the guy with the sword and black coat from before is not with you? He left with the man with the beard and that big hammer? Hearing her question, Gao Min, Li Na, and Fan Wu looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen He waiting for a response. Because Bai Zemin had stayed outside the room in a corner, the four girls had not seen him so they had thought he was doing another task. While it was true that they were happy to see their friends, especially Wu Yijuan since they had been friends since childhood, and while it was true that they were surprised to see that Chen He and Shang Guan Bing Shui seemed to have become more powerful people, the person who had left the biggest impression on the minds of the four girls had been the one who had sneaked into the dormitory and killed his way here. This was especially true for Wu Yijuan. She had seen how Bai Zemin was the only person capable of fighting in the upper hand against that blue-skinned zombie, so her impression of him was the greatest. Therefore, not seeing him here she couldn't help but wonder. Considering his strength, he definitely had to be one of the leaders. But where was he then, Ah, uh? Now that you mention it. Chen He blinked and looked at the surroundings, dumbfounded as he said, wasn't he just behind us a few minutes ago? How did he suddenly disappear? Shangguan Bing Shui was also speechless. After looking around the surroundings and not finding him anywhere, she couldn't help but grit her teeth as she complained in a low voice, this person. He really is like an uncontrollable horse. Didn't we all agree to move together before? Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 59 Mutant Plant, Part 3 Last. Oh? Wu Ijuan looked somewhat surprised and asked curiously, it seems that you guys aren't a very close group, well? It's not that we don't get along badly either. Chen He replied with a forced smile, it's just that he's a bit, special. He usually stays alone in a corner and doesn't seem particularly willing to talk to anyone. Therefore, it's hard to get close to him, even with our princess being Shui there that guy can stay away? Wu Ijuan joked as she looked at Shang Guan being Shui they were both beautiful women in their own right. It was just that the beauty of both of them was different. If Shang Guan Bing Shui was a beautiful ice goddess who seemed pure and remote, then Wu Yijuan was more of a beautiful ardent goddess with a more playful and gentle attitude. Shang Guan Bing Shui had been ranked as the number one beauty in the entire university while Wu Yijuan had been ranked second. However, this was because Shang Guan Bing Shui had more suitors and admirers, but Wu Yijuan was also courted by countless men who thought she was more beautiful. This? Chen, he looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui for a moment before hesitantly responding, actually, he doesn't seem to look at Bing Shui in any particular way. Maybe he has a girlfriend? Or maybe he's just not attracted to her? After all, before the whole world changed, he was an unknown person to us so we don't know much about him, MMH. Who knows? Wu Yijuan smiled mysteriously and did not pursue the matter further. We'd better go find that guy. Shang Guan Bing Shui sighed exhaustedly before turning around and walking towards the exit without waiting for an answer. She still remembered that Bai Zemin had said that he suspected that there might be something strange in this building, this was precisely the reason why they had all agreed to move together before he suddenly disappeared. Chen, he and the group of four friends quickly walked after her and so the group of six began to inspect the fourth floor, room by room. 
On the other hand, in one of the rooms on the fourth floor, the person who Shang Guanbing Shui's group was looking for was currently looking at the scene in front of him with a curious look. Earlier, the reason why Bai Zemin had suspected that there was something wrong with the blue-skinned evolved zombie's behavior was because the creature's behavior was too different from the rest of the zombies he had encountered so far. Normal zombies had no vision, only instinct, sound and smell to find prey to devour. Whenever a living being appeared within their detection range, the zombies would definitely advance towards that place regardless of whether the other party was strong or weak and with the only thought of eating their flesh and drinking their blood. However, the blue-skinned zombie had contradicted all of this almost completely. Phase 1 of the plan was not only to make noise to attract normal zombies and other creatures from the surrounding area, it was also to lure the evolved zombie out of the building and attack it together. However, the evolved zombie did not come out no matter how many glass windows they broke. In fact, even when Baizemin entered the female dormitory after kicking the front door loudly, the blue-skinned creature had not yet moved from the place where it was and only when Baizemin reached the fourth floor did it move. Considering the speed of the evolved zombie, if Chao Long wanted to run away then it would be difficult if he was chased by it. However, the evolved zombie had not hunted him down after expelling him and simply stayed inside the building. Moreover, the zombie also seemed to want to return to the building before fleeing when it faced the attack of Baizemin and the rest after being forcibly dragged out by the ice stake binding created by Shang Guan Bing Shui. But Baizemin did not expect something like this. What is this supposed to be? He asked in confusion with a frown as looked at the plant in front of his eyes in detail. This was a small plant, small enough to be carried in his pants pocket as it barely reached the height of a palm. Its leaves were a natural green color, but the strange thing was that there were tiny light green and red orbs hanging from some of the leaves. The green orbs were small, only the size of half a fingernail at most, and there were barely five of them. On the other hand, the red orbs were a bit bigger, about the size of a full fingernail and they were also scarcer as there were only two of them. That's a mutant plant. Lith approached him and touched the plant with the tip of her perfect finger as she patiently explained, after the arrival of a soul record on different worlds and with the mana movement or the appearance of said power source, different organisms will be pushed into evolution. This is something you already know, isn't it? You had explained it to me before, yes. Baizemin nodded and stared into her eyes, seemingly lost in that red wine glowing like rubies. Lilith continued, good. However, there are different forms of evolution and not all organisms are able to withstand the pressure of mana entering their bodies. Let me explain it this way. Those zombies that are rampant in the streets are organisms that did not manage to adapt and overcome the mana that entered their bodies and the union of different viruses. These viruses, in order not to be killed by mana, united to form a new infectious virus. As for how something like that happened, I don't know since each world is, precisely, a different world of possibilities and as I mentioned before, it is not known exactly what is the functioning or the reason of this existence called soul record. In fact, it is not known whether there is a purpose to begin with or not. Baizemin lowered his head in contemplation and stood silently for a couple of minutes to digest and comprehend the new information before raising his head again to look her in the eye and nod gently. Seeing him nod, Lilith finally got to the point for which this conversation had begun, with plants something similar happens. Some plants manage to adapt to the mana and can become terrifying monsters, and other plants, like this little one here, just mutate differently just like the zombies out there. Some of these plants can bear fruits that are beneficial to the body, and others can bear fruits that can make a living being's body blast into a thousand pieces after consuming it. I see. Baizemin finally understood and his gaze fell on the small plant, deep in thought. Currently, he was 80% sure that this small, exotic-looking mutant plant was a good treasure. The reason for this thought arose from the fact that the evolved zombie definitely did not want to leave this place because of the existence of this plant and, since zombies had not yet acquired enough intelligence, the creature never thought of uprooting the plant and moving it to another place. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 60 Plans to Go Out of University While it was true that the blue-skinned evolved zombie had tried to flee after realizing that if it confronted the entire party of Baizemin it would end up dying, this did not necessarily mean that it was an intelligent creature. It was probably just a battle instinct in that the evolved zombie could sense which wars it could win and which ones it had no hope of victory in. 
Since the world had become a kind of wild jungle, it was easy to assume that the evolved zombie, as an officially evolved creature, was capable of commanding zombies to some extent but only in relatively small numbers. This was natural, just as the adult lions were the leaders of the pack and led the smaller or weaker lions. Probably, the evolved zombie did not want other zombies to be on the fourth floor because of the existence of this mutated plant as it was a treasure to it and it was probably worried that the plant would be taken away from it. But there was a problem with this little plant and that was that while Byzemin was about 80% sure that it was a good treasure for the body, the other 20% was what was holding him back from eating one of its fruits. 80% versus 20% was a considerably higher amount, however, that 20% was not 0% and if Byzemin's guess was wrong then, just as Lilith had said, it was likely that his body would end up bursting into a blood mist and that was an idea he was not too pleased to imagine. Wouldn't it be ridiculous to die from eating something he didn't know what it was instead of dying fighting? Of course, it wasn't as if he had any plans to die, but if he really had to die he didn't want a pathetic death like that. Lilith, don't you have a way of knowing if this mutated plant is good or not? Byzemin looked at her and scratched his head not knowing what to do. Lilith shrugged her shoulders and said in a helpless voice, I am not an all-knowing existence. Byzemin, as I told you before, each world means a different world of probabilities and I can only help you with knowledge shared from other worlds. As for things specific and native from this world, that is something you will have to discover by yourself. Byzemin was dumbfounded for a moment before forcing a smile and shook his head softly. Forget it, I'll find a way. Byzemin thought as he took out an empty bottle and put in the earth from other plants in the room. Then he carefully removed the roots of the small mutated plant and moved it to its new home. Byzemin pierced several holes in the plastic bottle using the sharp point of the treasure glove on his left hand and then stored the bottle with the plant inside into a separate small pocket of his backpack, making sure to leave a small part open to let the air and rays of sunlight penetrate. Until he reached a safe place, this was all he could do temporarily. Byzemin, didn't we say we would all move together? Just as Byzemin had finished putting away the small mutated plant, a cold and indifferent voice, containing a hint of reproach, sounded from the entrance of the room. Even without turning around Byzemin already knew to whom that cold but at the same time tranquilizing voice belonged. He slowly stood up and slung his backpack over his shoulder before turning around and said with a smile, Well, I saw that you all seemed to know each other, and I didn't want to interrupt your heartwarming meeting. You. Shangguan Bing Shui wanted to say something but the reality was that it was in fact they were the ones who had dawdled for too long. Seeing her silently admit defeat, Bai Zemin couldn't help but feel a little better about himself and without another word walked towards the exit. This. Wait a moment please. He wanted to leave as he had something important to do but apparently more people wanted to hold him back. Bai Zemin turned around with a frown and looked at a girl whom he didn't know who was looking at him gratefully. Do I know you? No. Well, you saved me before. Li Na walked over and bowed profusely as she thanked him through tears, thank you very, really very much for today earlier. If it wasn't for you killing all those horrendous zombies and getting that blue-skinned zombie out of the building. I'm afraid I could only starve to death locked in that room. Bai Zemin saw that it wasn't just one girl, there were three more nodding and looking at him with eyes filled with gratitude. After a few seconds, he finally remembered that these girls were the ones in the room whose door was smashed down by him when he sent the evolved zombie flying with a kick. Ah, uh, that? It's nothing. Byzemin smiled slightly and pointed at Shangguan Bing Shui while slowly saying, If you want to thank someone, thank the president of the student association over there. I owed her a favor in the past and she used that favor to request my help or else it is unlikely that I would have risked fighting that evolved zombie. Byzemin did not take credit he thought undeserved and directly pointed to the real hero here. However, the gaze of the four friends towards him did not change. Although Byzemin wondered if that look of gratitude would remain on their faces when they learned that he had thrown a person alive into the zombies to be eaten a few hours ago. That was none of their business anyway, and it wasn't like it hurt him either. Everyone was free to do as they pleased and even more so in this new world. By the way, Shangguan Bing Shui. Bai Zemin turned around to leave before he remembered something and paused for a moment as he said, Tomorrow, I'll start clearing the path in a southerly direction to leave the university. Shangguan Bing Shui knew what he meant even without him saying anything else. 
She remained silent for quite some time, apparently considering a few things, before raising her head again to look at him and slowly saying, why don't you wait another day or two? Oh? And why? Baizeman raised an eyebrow slightly confused but not angry since from what he had seen of her so far, Shangguan Bing Shui was a woman who 90% of the time was rational and clear thinking. Therefore, he was willing to listen to her opinion and ideas. Remember the giant beetle? We still need to take care of that and while clearing the path to the exit will take some time at least we need a day or two to find someone willing to taste the meat first. Shangguan Bing Shui paused for a moment before continuing, besides, where Chao Long was staying were the keys of the school buses so we can use them to leave as long as we make our way to the parking lot. But even then we need to make some adjustments to the windows. Bai Zemin's eyes lit up slightly upon hearing Shangguan Bing Shui's reason as he had heard something that mattered more to him than the beetle's meat at the moment. 